G'day everyone, Gareth here from Organic Growing Melbourne. I'm just doing a quick garden follow-up. Um, you'll know from the last videos I had all my fruit trees lined up along here. All right, but you know we're getting very wet and cold weather now and as you can see you know it's just uh I'll go over here you can see it's just getting boggy and wet. Uh, some roots were coming through the bottom of my pots, some of the tropicals, so like the black sapote, um, some of the, avoc the, small, the avocado there in the small pot, and I, I don't want them to get root rot, so I've put them, I've moved them from here and I've put them on top of the mulch pile, so I get excellent drainage and I won't get root rot. Uh, some of these won't stay here because some of these trees here are deciduous. I'll lose all their leaves and then I'm going to be fighting frost. So eventually they'll get moved again under the pergola where they'll get irrigated. Um, again here, even the, the two soursop, custard apple, relinia, and what's the other one? Cherimoya. I don't want any of these. They're, a lot of them are full tropical and um, they'll get root rot. So they're all sitting on top of the mulch here until we get to those first frost days and I'll chuck them under the pergola. Um, more of these are gonna get moved, obviously. Um, these mangoes here, they'll get put under the avocado tree in winter. Um, that provides really good protection. Um, they go at the back there where there's a bit bit higher in there. Um, but the big mango, I'm going to attempt to keep that out for the whole winter. I want to see how it copes. Um, obviously the first frost will determine whether it stays out or not. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited but then also a bit scared about doing that I hate to lose it it could only take one frost day and it's gone but yeah so it'll, you can see the leaves are all starting to fall off so it won't be long and the nectarine and plum cherry another plum in here I'm actually thinking of ripping this plum out I'm thinking of ripping this plum out and then plant, so there's a, there it is there, I'm going to rip that out and I think I'll put an avocado right near this, right here. And then I'll have the house, I don't know, a B type. And then I've got the other avocado behind the banana. And then this is where I've put all the seeds in. And then I'm going to put another avocado in here. So I have four all close to each other. The seeds we planted in here the other day with Ella Rose, who is following me around, say hi. They're, um, they're just starting to come up now, as you can see. Some there, you can see there's a row of them, they go along there. Um, there's some more, you're hard to see, they're so tiny. But there's some... Um, There's another row just here. You see? One there. Another one just there. They're all starting to come up. The snow peas haven't yet. So I'm looking forward to those to come up. Because once, once they're done, harvest, I'll probably put a winter crop in there. And then we'll, um, and then I'll, uh, Get some wood chips like there, fill all this up with wood chips, and then coming into spring, we'll be putting the trees in, and then there'll be a uh, a white mulberry going in here. This is the uh, 
So this is the, the crop I put in, be obviously before the seeds. So we had the broccoli, cauliflower, the wong bok and the bok choy. I'm already eating this. It's been, oh, I think probably six weeks, not even six weeks. And I'm already, we had a stir fry yesterday actually, and we used the wong bok and the bok choy in that. So these are, these are good crops because you can start harvesting. I just pick the leaves off, pick the leaves off them. Not all of them, just one off that one, one off that one, one off that one, that one, that one. You don't want to take it all off one. And then over here, we've got the lettuce here. And again, we're using this as well. I just pick, pick leaves off each one so it can keep on growing. Unfortunately, the caterpillars have just devastated this. I have a like organic insecticide. It's like a soap based, and I, it was struggling to kill him. You can see one here. I mean, he's. I think he's dead. Yeah, he's dead. But it took three or four sprays to to get rid of them all. I, I was out here before and I did see a live one. So they might need to be sprayed again. But I had. I can't even remember what I had in here. I think I had broccoli. Broccoli and cauliflower again, I think. And uh, I think that's what it was. But you could see they just completely devastated it. And sometimes I don't. I get home too late. Now daylight savings finished as well. I'm going to get less time out here. The carrots are doing all right. They haven't been attacked at all. We can pull these weeds out. Another thing is, as you can see. The corn was blown over on the weekend, um, so I've already taken some inside to eat. And um, I put this this up here to block the wind. Generally the wind comes through the pergola down this way. But sometimes we've been getting winds that have been blowing, blowing across from there to there. And um, been hitting the shed and just doing all sorts of stuff to the corn. But the corn's, the corn's not bad. This is a very, very late crop I put in. And um, I'll try and get one. We'll try and have a look at one. This one here. You want to start? You got me? Yep. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I mean, this could have, this could have got stayed on for a little bit longer, but um, what I find, if I do leave it too long, um, sort of the start of the corn here is nowhere near as good or sweet. So I like to actually harvest them earlier than later. I have a very small window when it comes to corn, and if it's overdone. They're just chewy and just not juicy. But I'm going to have a taste of this, and Ella Rose is going to film me doing it. <laughs> All right, you ready? I'll tell you, we'll describe how good this corn is. Here we go. Mm. Oh, oh, that is really sweet. Mm. Mm. Do you want to bite Ella Rose? Yep. Hang on, one more. Mmm. <laughs> Oh, really juicy and sweet. Go. How sweet is that? Do you like it? You don't even need to cook this, do you? But I like to cook it, get it hot, to melt lots of butter on it. All right. If you don't want any more, guess where does it go? In the compost. Or? In the garden. Yeah, go chuck it over at the bamboo there. Let's feed the bamboo. Right All right, beauty. All right, so that corn was absolutely fantastic. So we're going to be eating a lot of corn probably every day now for the next two or three weeks because they've fallen over and they'll dry up very quickly. But um, you can still taste it. Yeah. It's beautiful though. It's sweet, isn't it? All right. Well, all right. I'm back because I actually forgot to show you something. So I walk around my garden 
every day. I check things every day. If you don't, this is what happens. Caterpillars take over. And I know I said I'm out here. In fact, there is a live one right there. So, just in there, see him? So I've got this spray again. Watch it. Watch it, Eleanor. And we are going to spray him. So this is that soap based. Whereabouts? Point out to it. Oh, yeah, I see him. Got him. Oh, another one might be there too. All right. But the reason I actually came out here, and I forgot to, is I came out and had a look at my apple. This is a new apple. I think it's, watch it over those. I think it's been in the ground here. Only this, only one, about a year, I'd say. I would have bought it probably the winter. So not quite a year. But when I was looking, Look. They're all on these new growth. Well, oh, here, look. Oh, there's a lot under there. So this tree needs to be sprayed as well. Yeah, I'm going to do it now. Watch it. I'm going to have to pump this up a bit more. But um, you can see you look under all these new leaves. And we don't like these. So I'm going to spray every underneath every branch with new growth like this watch it Eloise don't get don't get underneath this otherwise you're gonna get watch it and then, even on small and then I'll just pump this up again wow how many times do you need to pump and then I'll come out here tomorrow and check this one again and I just wanna make this Make the spray just a bit of a mist, like that. And it's, and it you really want to put, make sure you get them all. And they're mainly underneath the leaves, but then in, if you're looking here, they get into the top of this bud as well. So you need to get the top of it as well. There's some more underneath here. Ah. If you don't do this, they'll start eating all this new shoots. Although we're in autumn and it should be losing them, now I want to give these the best chance in winter as well. All right, so I've drenched this. So that'll do. You can see it's all dripping, Ooh. dripping with soap. <laughs> all right, so I'll come out here tomorrow and check to see if they've dried up and died off. Um, the thing is with aphids and all these little pests, uh, is they, they, um, they just turn up like really quickly. Like I'll show another example is the, uh, the, hip, the hibiscus. Again, the hibiscus I was spraying for, um, oh, three days. Just kept on spraying them because, again, buds. Buds, buds, oh there's actually some in there, I'll give them a spray. Yeah, they're probably dead. Whereabouts? Yeah, see how they've fallen off and they're on top of the leaf? See how they've fallen off? So they're probably all dead from the previous spray, but just in case, I'll give it a light spray over. But you know, once they take hold, they get everywhere. And you know, these have been flowering all year. Well, no, actually not all year, probably about September. And um, that's a beautiful hibiscus, this one. These are little tiny flowers, these ones. But they look awesome when they come out. But yeah, I started a little herb garden here as well. All right, so we'll call that call that a day, and um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget if you press that little bell, you'll get reminders every time I release a new video as well.
right. Take care, everyone. Bye.